We're going to um, begin with a song of invitation to the Spirit of God. Spirit of God, unseen as the wind. And the words will be on the screen. And uh, while we're in the chapel, sadly, we still can't be singing. But we can sing in our hearts, yes? We can, uh, and we can hum if we want to do that. And feel free to, to kneel or to, um, to stand, to raise a hand if you want to prostrate yourself, if that's what the Spirit leads you to do. But let's invite the Spirit, the unseen wind, the river of life, to come and flow through this place this morning. Let us pray. Spirit of God, unseen as the wind, we, we thank you that um, you are the river of life, flowing from the throne of God and from the Lamb, and that you are present with us now. And we ask you to rest on us, please, Holy Spirit, those of us present in the chapel here, the chapel to Christ's glory, those watching at home, participating at home, sharing in this worship, at home. Just rest on each one, Lord, and meet with us as we meet with you. Teach us the truth, Lord, we pray. Show us the Saviour's love, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, six or seven days ago, as I began thinking about the service, uh, the Lord uh, dropped um, three words into my head, which uh, really surprised me, and I wondered where um, he was going to take me with them. And the words were lies, damned lies. I thought, ooh. <laughs> what do you do with that then? And, uh, and I was surprised, but as I've waited on the Lord, um, the Lord has just uh, gently spoken to me about it. And I, and I mean gently. He's just really carefully showed me how he wants me to use it to help us reflect, help us reflect on some, uh, some amazing truths. Notice the lives and the lies and the truths. So we may be able to focus on some truths. And it comes from waiting on him and just listening to him. When we hear lies, damned lies, I wonder what that, what that makes you think of, what that makes you feel. Um, 
on earlier occasions I, I speak about posture and it's amazing as soon as you men mention posture in a room you see people straighten up <laughs> and just just you know tuck in a bit and just straighten themselves up and and, and I think lies is a bit like that it just um, it just makes us feel mm, where's this going how are we going to deal with this but the Lord just reminded me in the last 24 hours, Jesus came to the world to save the world, not to condemn the world. Jesus came to minister saving and healing and grace. He didn't come to condemn and to punish. No. So I've been praying, Lord, what do you want me to do with lies, damned lies? And uh, he reminded me of a lovely parable, which the words will be on the screen, Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. And you'll pick it up straight away, I'm sure. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in the field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed ears, the weeds also appeared. An enemy the owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you go sow good seed in the field? When did the weeds, where did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring the wheat into my barn. I saw it straight away. It's how truth and lies have become so interwoven in the world we live in. Isn't it true? That it's difficult to separate them today. What is truth? What is lie? Like the weeds and the wheat growing together. Lies have become almost a part of the culture we belong to. Lies hang around like a cloud. Lies are a pandemic of their own. Spread from the Garden of Eden where they were first sown, through the world to even today. There are two dangerous, equally dangerous oversights that Christians fall into. Two equally dangerous oversights that Christians fall into. You and me, you and me. We don't resist the father of lies enough. We don't resist the father of lies enough. And we don't invoke the spirit of truth enough. Yes, we do resist the enemy. But do we do it enough? Yes, we do invite the Holy Spirit. But do we do it enough? We live dangerously when we don't. And it's worth considering. In a moment, I'm going to ask Stephen to play some music so that we can just think about these four, these four pictures I'm going to lay before you. Um, which, which are what lies do and what lies have done in people's lives across the globe, yours and mine included. And I'll just ask then the spirit of truth to come and minister to us. Firstly, lies damage, don't they? Lies damage. Anybody been damaged by lies? I'm not asking you to hold up your hand, but I suspect each one of us have had an experience of being damaged by lies. Each one of us. Every one of you watching online, damaged by lies. So in the music, in the silence, as Stephen plays, I'm going to ask the Spirit to come and rest on you with his healing. He knows your damage, he knows your wounding, and he wants to bring the healing of Jesus Christ to you. So that's the first picture. The second one is, you may be being lied to now. You may be being lied to now either in the circumstances at home, family, church, community, the enemy coming to you and lying to you now. 
And if there, is a, if there is that behavior going on in your mind now, in the, as the music plays, I'm just going to ask the spirits to, to come and, and help us to discern where we may be being lied to, because that will lead to destruction, it will lead to damage, and give us wisdom to be able to find a way out of that. And the third picture is, um, sometimes we, we flirt with lies, like the wheat and the weeds, when we exaggerate a good story, or when we try to save face, or when we don't confront conflict situations, we, we sometimes flirt with lies ourselves, and, and there is a danger in that. And uh, so again, we'll just pray that the Spirit will come and, and, and help us to unpack that and, um, uh, and meet us at that place that we are so that we can be, um, we, we can be free of that. And then the, fine, the, the final picture is, um, if you are captive to lies, and, and for some people, we may even know some, we just can't stop lying. If you're captive to lies this morning, there is a rescuer, there is a way out, and his name is Jesus Christ. But as Stephen plays, and we listen to the music, and we listen to the Spirit of God, just if, if he needs to minister to you in, each, in any one of those four areas, if you've been damaged, if you're being lied to now, if, if you're flirting with lies, um, and if you are captive to lies, then let's just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal. The Spirit of truth is here, and He wants to reveal and heal and free and cleanse and enable us to walk straight. So Stephen, please, if um, you just play some music for a couple of minutes, thank you.
Just continue in prayer. Oh, Spirit of Truth, thank you that you rest on those who are damaged, that you bring healing to broken hearts and, and minds and lives. And Lord, where there is damage um, on, any, on any of us um, now as a result of, of, of lies of the past, lies of the present, we ask, Holy Spirit, please, that uh, you, would, you would stretch, stretch out, and at the hand of Jesus, just stretch out and rest on, on brothers and sisters right now, on friends right now, and bring healing, Lord. And Lord, if we're in a situation where, um, where we are being deceived, where we are being lied to even now, and it may be by a family member, it may even be by um, um, a, f a fellow Christian, if we are being lied to, uh, Lord, we ask that you would give discernment so that we may be able to see that and uh, we may be able to find a way out. Lord, thank you that you promised there will always be a way out. So help us, Lord, to see the way out from that, um, from, from the, the web that may begin to weave its way around us. And, and Lord, Holy Spirit of truth, sometimes, sometimes we, we cover up the truth. Sometimes we resist you, sometimes we quench you, and, uh, and we stretch the truth. And... And Lord, we know that where we battle with the knowing right from wrong, where we battle between truth and lie, we ask, please help us. If there is something in our lives now where, we, where we're just covering, up, covering things up um, with a lie, then, then, then please open our eyes, Lord, to see that, that we may be free from that now. And Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit of truth, if, if there is anybody um, sharing this moment, if any one of us is held captive to the liar, the father of lies right now, uh, we say in the name of Jesus, be gone, you have no jurisdiction here. We know that God forbids lies, we know that God hates lies, and we turn away from the lies that we are living under, the lies that we uh, walk in, the lies that we, um, we share with our own mouths. And we, we, we confess that, Lord, and we want to move away from that, and we want to walk in the spirit of truth. So please help us. Free us. You come to bring freedom to the captive. Free us today, Lord, please. Thank you. Thank you. And just as we continue in a, a place of prayer, we're going to sing a lovely song, Purify My Heart. And uh, we'll just hum that song while we're here in the chapel. But at home, you can sing the words as they're on the screen. Purify my heart, Lord. Purify my heart, please, Spirit of Truth. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen.
Let us pray. The lovely prayer of that uh, great African bishop, St. Augustine of Hippo. Let's, um, let's pray. Breathe in us, Holy Spirit, that we may think what is holy. Move in us, Holy Spirit, that we may do what is holy. Attract us, Holy Spirit, that we may love what is holy. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit, that we may guard what is holy. Guard us, Holy Spirit, that we may keep what is holy. Amen. Amen. Just, um, just like to explore a couple of verses from John's Gospel, chapter 15, for a moment, just very briefly, because uh, they, speak, they speak to us about the wheat. They speak to us about the truth in the field. Um, we've spent a bit of time thinking about the weeds in the field, um, the, uh, the lies and the damage they do and the corruption that, um, that uh, they, they lead us into. But I want to just think about the, um, the truth for a moment. John chapter 15, verses 26 to 27. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I've said it already this morning, I'm going to say it again. There are two equally dangerous oversights that Christians fall into. We don't resist the father of lies enough, and we don't invoke the, the spirit of truth enough. And we do well to, to consider those things every day, to resist the enemy, to resist the, the weeds when they try and tangle themselves around us, and to invoke the Holy Spirit, to invite the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth to come and uh, to help us to walk. Um, I just love that. When the advocate comes, there's a lovely Greek word there, which is paraclete. And um, it, it's one of those lovely words like shalom, which has so many different meanings. And uh, we can get really excited about it. And I wonder what your, if you, if you have a Bible, if you're looking at your Bible at home, I wonder what translation um, is used for that word paraclete. Um, uh, there are so many different, as many Bible translations as there are, there will probably be different translations for that word paraclete. And I'm just going to look at four very quickly. Um, uh, to help us to use the spirit of, the spirit of truth. He comes to, to be with us to help us. Firstly, um, that word can be translated as alongsider, comforter. And who doesn't need and alongside her. Who doesn't need a comforter? We all do. And he comes alongside us to be with us in our damage, in our hurt, in our wounding. He comes alongside us to bring us truth, to bring us healing. And he loves to see us um, walking in the light, not in the darkness, walking in his presence, in the presence of truth. A second um, translation is, is advocate. Um, someone who stands, like in a law court, and um, puts a case before um, on somebody's behalf. And the Spirit of Truth does that for us. He comes, he comes alongside us to put a case on behalf of us. Jesus says, um, they will arrest you and they will persecute you, but the Spirit will give you what to say. That's where he's playing his advocate role. He will help you to know what to say. And a third translation that we get from that word paracletus is counselor. And, and where, we, where, we, where we flirt with the enemy and flirt with lies, the counselor, we need a counselor, somebody who can unravel those things for us. Am I, am I, am I deceiving myself? Please help me to know so that I can sort this out. Well, the counselor comes alongside and says, well, I can help you with this. Do you want some, some help? 
We all, we all need some help when we, when we get caught up in that tanglement of life sometimes. And the, the fourth one, one of my favorite translations of this word paraclete is helper. I, I love to call the Holy Spirit the helper. He's my helper. I have a help. Um, isn't that nice? His name is God, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, and he's my helper. And folk, when we are captive to something, the helper comes to do what? To free us. And that's part of the work of the Holy Spirit. He brings freedom. And some of us will have known something of that. He brings freedom to, to our lives. He frees us from the things that we may be captive to. Um, and those are just four of the, the, the words that we can translate from that lovely word paraclete. He comes, he comes to, to make Jesus real for us. That's what it says. He comes to testify about me. He comes to talk to people about Jesus. He comes to make Jesus real so that we may see what? We may see Jesus who is the truth. He wants us to know truth. And the gospel is the comp is the proclamation of the truth about God and the world. The truth about God and the world. And what's the truth about God? The truth about God is God is love. What does love do? Love sends Jesus into the world. Why? To save the world, not to condemn the world. And why does he do that? Because the world is in a state of lostness and brokenness and needs help. So God, because of love, sends Jesus into the world so that there may be forgiveness for sin, so that there may be life after death. I'm going to finish now. You'll be pleased to know. And, um, I don't know if you listened to the Archbishop of Canterbury on Easter Sunday morning. I did. The first line of his sentence really got, the first line of his sermon really got my attention. Um, I wonder if anybody remembers it. Um, here's the Archbishop of Canterbury and, um, standing there in all his regalia, and he says, Death is the greatest and most devastating liar. Death is the greatest and most devastating liar. The father of lies would have us believe that our last breath is the final breath. It's a lie. We get to live in Jesus Christ. Do you want to live in Jesus Christ? Not just for today, but forever. We have the opportunity of doing that. With the help of the helper. Do you want some of that? I want some of that. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you send us a gift, and oh my goodness, he is a gift. <laughs> what a gift you are, Holy Spirit, alongside her, advocate, counselor, helper. Thank you. Thank you for the way that you are resting on each of us and ministering to us now those at home, on different continents, speaking truth into their lives, into their situations, some in, in situations of persecution and hardship, some in places of darkness. Oh, Holy Spirit of truth, please bring light. Please bring love. Please bring Bring the reminder that in Christ we have the victory. Thank you. I suspect we all have nations on our hearts where we know that the people of those nations are living under um, tyrannical rules of deception and deceit and lies. Oh, Holy Spirit of truth. Father, Jesus, please come to these nations, the people of these nations, and bring freedom, bring healing, bring restoration, please, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Father, thank you for that picture of, uh, of the throne of God and the Lamb and the river of life flowing from it and the tree of life with leaves for the healing of the nations. And Lord, we know that that is our destiny. We will be in that place where the river of life flows abundantly, where the tree of life 
speaks to us about our well-being, our wholeness, always reminding us where there is no more pain, no more death, no more crying, no more disease, no more lies. Oh Lord, thank you for that destiny that we await. Come Lord Jesus, come quickly, we pray. Amen. Folk, if any of you would like prayer during the day, there are a couple of chaplains around, so just speak to one of the chaplains. And if you're at home would like prayer for yourself or for somebody, please send in um, the name, your own name, or the names of those that you want prayer for, and we will meet them. Or come, come to one of our services at 10 o'clock, or just come to Howard's Well. Um, we're open Monday to Friday. Um, between 8.30 and 3.30 and you can come and enjoy um, enjoy the meeting and encountering the peace and the presence of the Lord that is in this place and enjoying refreshments and good company good conversation about Jesus and, uh, and, uh, and receive prayer as well but if you aren't able to make it then please send in the name and be assured of our prayers each day for three months uh, we will pray for you Okay, folk, we're going to um, finish off with a lovely, lovely song. I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago, and it was the, th the theme song of the conference. It is well with my soul. Isn't that a lovely song? It is well with my soul. The story behind the song is quite amazing. Some of you will know it. Horatio and Anna Spafford, um, uh, they lost a son in 1871. And, um, and then a, a great fire in uh, Chicago burnt all of their property and uh, his investment and everything. He was a, he was a, a wealthy and um, well-known uh, lawyer, and, and he lost everything. Um, and, a, and, and as they were trying to deal with that, as they were trying to deal with the, the death of their son, he decided that uh, maybe they should go. They were good friends with Dwight Moody and Ira Sankey, and they said maybe we should go and join them on, and join them on one of their European tours. Um, and so they planned to go, and uh, they were going to um, uh, to ship there. Um, but um, Horatio couldn't go, and so he sent his wife and their four daughters. And, um, and on the way, in mid-Atlantic, um, the ship collided with another ship, and uh, they lost their four daughters. Um, so in the space of three years, he lost all his children, lost his business, lost all his property. And his wife, Anna, um, uh, went on. And uh, then he went to, um, and to go and collect her, um, obviously broken and damaged, and he went to go and collect her. And as they came across the place where the, the ships had collided, the captain called Horatio and said, we believe this is where the accident took happen. This is where your children um, were, uh, uh, were drowned. And Horatio went back to his cabin, and he wrote this hymn. And it is a hymn of faith, it is a hymn of strength. It is a hymn of belief. But it doesn't, it doesn't gloss over the pain. It doesn't gloss over the fight with the enemy. But he knew his Redeemer, and he knew the Spirit of Truth. And so in faith, he writes this song. Thank you, Stephen.
Let us end with a prayer. Father, thank you. Father, thank you for, the, for, that, um, for that encouragement, for that affirmation of faith by Horatia. Oh, Lord, thank you. And Holy Spirit, we need your help to have the courage to stand, to, um, to have the strength to stand, to have the truth to fight. to have the perseverance to run the race. So Father, Lord Jesus, please send afresh your Holy Spirit, the ruler of life, and help us in these days. Until that day of harvest, where the weeds and the wheat will be separated, and we will be with you forever. Thank you. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all who you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Folk, thank you for joining us. The, the sun is shining, isn't it? A glorious day. Um, there's refreshments at Howard's Well. Um, opportunity to speak to a chaplain or to have prayer if you'd like. Or just to go for a walk and enjoy the grounds. The, you are beautiful people. You are all beautiful people. And it's uh, lovely to have you with us. God bless you. <laughs>